So we read yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, from the book about Andrew Jackson. Um, Andrew Jackson is a pretty fascinating person, um, just as a person and not necessarily a president, but a little more background. Some of this is review from what you read. He grew up very, very poor, um, somewhere on the border between North and South Carolina. It's important because it tells us he was a Southerner, which is going to play a role in some of the things he does. Anyway, his dad died at the age of 29. You read this in the book about three weeks before he was born. By the time he was 13, some things the book didn't mention. His mom also had died and two brothers had died in the Revolutionary War. He had been captured by the British. You read in the book that at age 13, he signed up for the militia and he had survived smallpox. So if you think of what he just went through between birth and age 13, pretty unbelievable. Self-made man, what I mean by that, he came from nothing. If you look at his background, he came from this to become a politician, a lawyer, president of the United States, a war hero. So self-made man, Native American fighter, fought again in the War of 1812, becomes a lawyer after that. Um, he had two bullets lodged in him. One was his chest and one was in his arm. <clears throat> Back then, if you got shot and the bullet wasn't going to kill you necessarily, they're not going to take it out. Surgery and stuff like that was just not, it wasn't a thing. So it wasn't super uncommon for people to walk around with bullets lodged in them. His nickname was Old Hickory because he was so strong-willed, um, strong-willed, stubborn. He was famous for not bending. One time when he was practicing law as a prosecutor, he knocked out a tax dodger with a piece of wood. As a military commander, he would execute his own men who disobeyed his orders. Military was a little bit different back then. If you didn't follow an order, the commander did have that option to do that. At one battle in 1813, um, so this is War of 1812 still. Many of his men threatened to go back to Tennessee because they didn't want to fight anymore. Jackson rode his horse in front of the men, pulled out his musket, and threatened to, con to kill anyone who continued. No one did because they knew he was being serious with that. Rumor has it that Jackson participated in over 100 duels in his lifetime. He was just the type of man that you did not mess with. He was also the first president to have an assassination attempt on his life. There was a guy, I don't remember his name, it might be on the next bullet point. Anyway, he was an immigrant from England, and weird story behind it. I read about it, and I didn't quite get everything, but he somehow claimed that the United States owed him money, and he was upset because Jackson was the president, so he's going to attempt to kill him. Um, Jackson was at the U.S. Capitol building. There was a funeral for a senator or a representative, so Jackson was there. He's walking out of the Capitol building. The guy walks up to him, pulls out his pistol, but it misfired, meaning it didn't fire. Like a lot of times the gun might have jammed or something like that. While he was doing that, I don't know why it says that the guy had another pistol. At least the guy was prepared. He pulls that out, attempts to, to kill Jackson again, but that one also misfired. Meanwhile, Jackson figures out what's going on, and he was 67 at the time. He attacked the man and beat him with his walking cane. So Andrew Jackson, fascinating character. Um, it reads, as we study and look at Jackson, we're going to look at the good and bad things he did as president. Pay careful attention. At the end of the unit, you're going to have an activity that's going to look at his successes and failures. I think I mentioned this yesterday, but all presidents do good things. All presidents do bad things. It's not like we have a president and all they did was good. Like even Abraham Lincoln and, and George Washington, they all make their mistakes. At the same time, presidents that history, or yeah, presidents that history doesn't look down on all that great. There was still some good things that they did. So I think with a president, what you're hoping for is they do more good than bad. Anyway, one of our themes will be Jacksonian democracy, or the idea that common people should participate in government, not just the educated people, not just the wealthy. And it makes sense that Andrew Jackson believes in that because. That's why we spent so time, much time with his background. He came, he grew up poor. He grew up without parents. He was an orphan. Um, he basically came from nothing. And his thought was, if you, through hard work and, and things like that, you can be successful in life and you can participate in politics. 
That's why I showed you these. If you look at these um, people that George Washington is surrounding him, himself with, it's, it's the wealthy, it's the educated. You can tell by the way they're, they're dressed. This is like the elite of the society. Meanwhile, the second one, Andrew Jackson, he's surrounding himself with people that are everyday normal people. Okay, sure, they're dressed up. Everyone dressed up back then. But if you look at the, the dresses and the suits the men are wearing, they're not nearly as fancy. These are everyday normal people. And Jackson really kind of went out of his way to get those people involved. <clears throat> okay, as you're watching this video, this is the point where you're going to have to take some notes. So there is no guided notes for this unit. So what I need you to do in your spirals, not on your bell ringer page, you need to write this down as your title. And as I go through this, there's not that much notes today. Um, you need to get down what's underlined. So the title is Jackson and Voting Rights. It reads, how did Jackson allow more people to vote? And I put up here before we answer that, we needed to define this term. And the term is suffrage. You'll still see this um, word occasionally. Suffrage is simply the right to vote. Before Jackson, who could vote? So Jackson's the, the seventh president of the United States. Who was eligible to vote? For the most part, before Andrew Jackson was president, it was white men. You had to be over 21 years old, and you had to own property or pay taxes. This is a time period where a lot of people didn't own property, and they didn't pay a ton of taxes because people were poor. Back then, it seems like people were either poor or rich, and there was really not... <laughs> a middle class and more people were poor. So not that many people were voting back then. After Jackson though, <clears throat> it may not seem like a change, but it got a lot more people eligible to vote. After Jackson, it was most white men could vote and they took away the, the uh, what's the word? The requirement that you needed to own property or pay X amount of dollars in taxes. So you can somewhat give Jackson and others of that time period credit for getting poor white men the ability to, to vote. With that being said, we still had a long way to go. Women, African Americans, and Native Americans are still unable to vote during this time period. So Andrew Jackson, he was president, I want to say around 1830-ish. Um, just to give you an idea, African American men get the right to vote. We'll talk about this later in the year, 1867, somewhere around then. Women get the right to vote around 1920, so another 100 years almost for them. And actually out of these three groups, it took Native Americans the longest to get the right to vote. They won't get the right to vote until the 1930s. So I found this poster. I, I thought this was an interesting poster dealing with suffrage. So take a second and look at this. And it reads up at the top, what a woman may be and yet not have the vote. Meaning women can't vote, but they might be a mayor or a nurse or a mother or a doctor or a teacher, a factory hand. Then down here it says what a man may have been and yet not lose the vote. And then it has a convict. A convict is someone that is in prison, a lunatic, a slave owner, um, someone that was disabled, someone that is a drunk so the point of this is women can be great things and contribute to society, but it doesn't matter. They don't get to vote, yet men can be these seemingly bad things and still have the right to vote. But as I said, women getting the right to vote, it's going to be another 90 years or so. Okay, so to wrap this up, it says Jackson and equality. He thought all white men should be able to vote hold public office, like run for mayor, senator, president, etc., and anything else they had the ability to do. He did not favor the rich over the poor. Um, and again, this was very, very different compared to previous presidents.